Hi there everybody. So today I am going to explain you the image formation by plane mirror using ray diagrams and I am also going to give you a very short trick which you can use it in the exams to make the ray diagrams very very perfectly. So first of all we are going to follow the laws of reflection and try to draw the image of this particular object. So we have this plane mirror and this part is the painted part so basically the non reflecting part of the mirror and this part of the mirror is the reflecting part of the mirror. You may consider object as a small bulb over here. So there are multiple rays which are going to come out of the bulb and after striking the mirror they are going to get reflected. But we would be needing only two rays for making the ray diagrams. Right. So let's begin. So I am going to take a scale and then two rays will be pulled out from this object and these two rays since they are striking the mirror they are known as incident rays. So let me call this as incident ray number one and this as incident ray number two. Now these two points are the point of incidence because the incident ray when it wherever it touches the mirror those points are known as point of incidence. So I am supposed to draw a normal and the normal is a line which is perpendicular to the mirror and it passes through point of incidence. So from here a perpendicular line from here a perpendicular line like this the line should be perpendicular to the reflecting surface or the mirror and it should pass from the point of incidence. Now the angle between the normal and the incident ray is the angle of incidence here let me call this angle as I2. Now since we have completed till here we should measure the angle of incidence I1 and I2. So I should put the protector over here and I should make sure that this black line must match my plane mirror and the normal must match this particular 90 degree line. So the angle of incidence is from here till here. So it is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 then I have 55 and somewhere around 58 degree because this is the angle of incidence right. So from here to here this is the angle of incidence so from 90 to 80 10 degree 20, 30, 40, 50 somewhere around 58 or 59 degree approximately we have the angle of incidence. So here I should leave one division beyond 30 and from here I should leave again one division beyond 30 so over here. So from this side the angle is 58 degree approximately so from here also this angle should be 58 degree. So I am going to put a dot over here so almost leaving one division after 30 over here too. Now from here to here I am going to draw a straight line. This is my reflected ray number 2 and this is going to be R2 and these two angles are roughly the same approximately 58 degree. This is also 58 degree. Okay. Now I should measure the angle of incidence I1 and repeat the same procedure. And I see that this angle I1 is approximately this is 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, 35 degree and two more divisions 37. So approximately this angle is 37 degree. So I1 is 37 degrees. So uh, the reflection angle must also be 37 degrees. So the angle of reflection should also be 37 degrees. So I am leaving 1, 2 and 3 lines after 50. So I should leave 3 lines after 50. This is 50. So 1, 2 and 3 almost over here. So this is my reflected ray going to pass from here. Like this. Now this is angle R1 again. 37 degree. Now I should draw an eye over here like this 
the observer's eyes. Now these two reflected rays are going to go into the eyes of the observer. So since these reflected rays are diverging in nature, they are going far apart, so a virtual image is formed. If these reflected rays would have converged at one location, then we would surely be getting a real image. Now in this particular case, the reflected rays are diverging. So for sure, we are going to get a virtual image and we will form and obtain the virtual image by extending these two reflected rays backwards. So I'm going to use a scale again and I will extend these rays by using a scale. Make sure that when you place the scale, you are extending this by a dotted line like this. So I've extended this backwards. Now this should also be extended backwards. Now somewhere over here, we are going to get an image. Now this image is virtual in nature formed behind the mirror. Now we would measure the distance from the object to the mirror. So this is the object distance. I must say O object distance. And it has to be the perpendicular distance. You have to drop a perpendicular line from object to the mirror and you have to drop a perpendicular line from the image to the mirror. Now these two are again the same. So this is the image distance. From mirror to the image, the object distance is the distance from object to the mirror. Now I can prove these two mathematically equal because this triangle, let me give the name as O, A, this point as B. So O, A, B and I, A, B triangle, these two triangles are congruent. See, since this is 37, so this angle should be 53 because this whole angle is 90 degree. So if this is 37, this is 53. Now these two are vertically opposite angles. So this angle is also 53. Now since this angle is 37, so this angle is again 53. So these two angles are equal. These two angles are equal 90 degrees because we have dropped a perpendicular line. Now this is common. So by angle side angle, these two triangles are congruent. So in triangle, two triangles being congruent, this two will also be the same. So object distance and the image distance are also the same. But guys, as you can see that this is taking a very long time to draw and interpret all these things. So I'll give you a very short exam method how to draw this diagram accurately. If you do not use the protractor, then what is going to happen? If you do not use this protractor, then what is going to happen is you may mess up with these angles and this final image won't be formed over here. It might be slightly displaced and you may lose your marks in the exam. So without using protractor, what you can do is simply measure the distance, drop a perpendicular line from here to here and measure this distance. So this is about 4.9 centimeters. So I should say from the mirror at 4.9 centimeters distance, which is here, put a dot and here you'll be getting the image. So directly draw the image first, draw the perpendicular line also. So before making the ray diagrams, draw the image itself because now you know the object distance and image distance are same. So this is 4.9 centimeters, the object distance. Exactly at 4.9 centimeters, draw the image. Now pull out two incident rays like this. These are our two incident rays. Now join these two point of incidences with your image with a dotted line. And now extend this dotted line forward like this and extend this dotted line 
also forward like this. Now the normal is exactly in between it is the angle bisector again over here it is the angle bisector so this is your incident ray number one incident ray number two reflected ray number one reflected ray number two this two angles i1 and r1 are going to be the same these two angles i2 and r2 are going to be the same again you can draw an eye over here and you can see that how easily we have made the entire diagram and nobody would actually know that you haven't used the protractor as well so hopefully guys you might have enjoyed my explanation if you are new to my channel please do subscribe and share my videos as much as you can thank you for watching